Hi, welcome to the origin of the dream of freedom, where people in history began dreaming about a world and a life where they could experience freedom, believing that it was a gift from God, but at the same token, knowing it was something worth fighting for. I want to suggest to you that freedom is always worth fighting for, but it's never free. It always comes with a cost. This story is about a man with three biblical names, John, Peter, Gabriel, Muhlenberg. Muhlenberg, by the way, is not the biblical name. I just want you to know that. But John, Peter, and Gabriel, those are the ones I'm talking about. He was born in 1746 in Pennsylvania. He began pastoring a Lutheran church, a Lutheran church, not Lutheran church, a Lutheran church in Woodstock, Virginia in 1772. Muhlenberg had a military bent to his mind. And he was following closely the news of the day, the drama between the colonies and the mother country with keen interest. When a community of a local militia formed, he was elected as its chairman and served as the chair of that committee to put together um, men who would be fighting in that local militia. The news of the Battle of Bunker Hill cut into Muhlberg's Mul- heart like a knife. On January 21st, 1776, he preached a dramatic sermon with a surprise ending. His text was Ecclesiastes 3, 1-8. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time, if you will, to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal time to break down, and time to build back up. According to his nephew, when Muhlenberg came to verse 8, he read the words with great feeling. And he said dramatically, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The Bible tells us there's a time for all things, the preacher said, and there's a time to preach and a time to pray. But for me, the time to preach has passed away. And raising his voice like a trumpet, he called out, And there is a time to fight, and that time has now come. Some accounts of that particular day said he went into a side room, removed his clerical gown, and put on the uniform of a soldier. Others claim that he threw off his clerical gown before the congregation, revealing a soldier's uniform already on underneath. In any event, the church was stirred as he walked down the aisle, went out the door, and signaled a drumbeat as he appealed for volunteers. That day, the congregation spilled out onto the lawn while others from the village hearing the drum rushed to the scene. The sight of the pastor in uniform standing at the door calling for recruits kindled the most unbounded enthusiasm. And before that night was over, nearly 300 men had joined their local militia. Muhlenberg was with George Washington at Valley Forge. He fought battle after battle, and after the war was promoted to Major General. He never returned to the pulpit, though his faith in Christ remained strong. Instead, Muhlenberg felt God's guidance to devote himself to the affairs of state. He was elected from Pennsylvania to the first Congress, and in 1801 was elected United States Senator. President Thomas Jefferson appointed him Supervisor of Revenue for Pennsylvania, and Muhlenberg served in that post until he died on his 61st birthday. To a person who had questioned Muhlenberg about leaving the ministry, he wrote, You say, as a clergyman, nothing can excuse my conduct. I am a clergyman, it is true. But I am a member of society as well as the poorest layman, and my liberty is as dear to me as any other man. Shall I then sit still and enjoy myself at home when the best blood of the continent is being spoiled? Heaven forbid it. Do you think if America should be conquered, I should be safe? Far from it. And would you not sooner fight like a man than die like a dog? I am called by my country to its defense. The cause is just. The cause is noble. Were I a bishop, even a Lutheran one, I would obey without hesitation. And so far from I, so far from I from thinking that I'm wrong, I'm convinced it is my duty to do so, a duty I owe to my God and to my country. Pretty powerful commitment. Today, if you were to go to the Capitol, there is in the United States Capitol a statue of John Peter Gabriel Muhlenberg. A memorial to him is located on Connecticut Avenue, Connecticut Avenue in Washington, 
Um, Muhlenberg County in Kentucky is named for him. There is another memorial that stands to him behind the Philadelphia Museum of Art. That's where the Rocky statue is. Two, two statues are put up in his honor in Woodstock, Virginia. And there is a college, Muhlenberg College in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is named for him. The man who is known as the fighting preacher of the American Revolution. I said earlier when we started that freedom is never free and is always worth fighting for. Uh, there are many causes that you can be involved in. But when we go back in history, I am thankful for men, women, who are willing to put it all on the line, if you would, for freedom, to preserve it, and to keep it, and remind us it is worth fighting for. In that particular preacher's case, he said it was this call of God. It was a call to duty. And there was no higher honor than being obedient. God, too, has called you to be a crusader for the truth and, of course, freedom as well. And so embrace that role. Embrace that life. Uh, don't be afraid to stand up for those things that you believe and stay true to the call of Christ as you battle for freedom and truth in a world that doesn't always want to hear it. That is how, how the origins of the dream of freedom began. And that's how they live on to this day. May God bless you as you strive to be that freedom fighter that God has called you to be.